Cross it. All right, hey everybody, this is Dr. O. Uh, when this video we're going to talk about the pH and its effect on growth. We've already covered oxygen and temperature, these kind of things. So just real quickly, the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. Anything with a pH under 7 would be acidic. Anything with a pH above 7 would be alkaline or basic. So an acidophile is going to love an acidic environment. A neutrophile is going to love that neutral pH area around 7, give or take. And an alkalophile is going to like more alkaline temperature. So first of all, there's a tremendous diversity with microorganisms. There are organisms that grow anywhere basically but we only care about the ones that like to grow in us and on our food right so um, most bacteria are going to grow at a pH between 6.5 and 7.5 makes sense you know that's the world around us is like that our bodies are like that so make sure you note that most bacteria like to grow between a pH of 6.5 and 7.5 hovering right around a uh, neutral uh, there are very few microorganisms, very few bacteria that can grow under a pH of 4. So there are some acidophiles, there are some organisms that can grow at a pH of 1, but they're not going to grow in you or your food, so we don't really care about them. The reason that we, we love the fact that a low pH will inhibit almost all microbial growth, and especially pathogens, this is why fermenting your food is such a powerful food preservation method. So when you turn cabbage into sauerkraut, or you make kimchi, or make yogurt, these kind of things, fermenting things lowers the pH greatly because of all the lactic acid added to the to the food and that's what makes it a preservation method. I don't know how long a, a cabbage would keep sitting out or even in the refrigerator, but I've had sauerkraut that I, I keep in the fridge just to see how long it goes before it before it turns and it, and it hasn't after years. So so the fact that um, most microbes don't like a lower pH is the reason fermentation is such a great food preservation method. All right. Um, just so you know, molds and yeast, they generally can grow along a, a larger pH range, but they generally like a pH closer to 5 to 6. So bacteria like 6.5 to 7.5, molds and yeast a little more acidic. Um, one last really important thing, so whether you're trying to keep microbes alive in a lab or, or hoping they don't survive, remember that just like us, microorganisms produce acidic byproducts as, as a, 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 of their, as a, or acidic products or compounds as a byproduct of their own metabolism. So we generate acids that have to be dealt with. Um, we have buffers, but then we have, um, you know, uh, urinary and respiratory mechanisms to deal with those acids. Microbes basically spew them into our environment. So as microbes are growing, they basically poison their own environment by spewing out acids, which lowers the pH, which they don't like. So this is one of the main reasons that we don't, we don't live on a planet just a mile deep with bacteria. They poison their own environment by releasing these acidic byproducts that lower the pH. So yay us, right? All right, so that is the effect that pH is going to have on microbial growth. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.